Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another coding video. In this video, we are going to be starting the first part of a multi-part series on creating an Electron app that you can put on your resume. Um, this is going to be a very simple Electron app that just basically uses a um, local database using MongoDB. Um, it's going to use a simple login authentication. And then on the main screen, there'll just probably be something simple for state. Um, so that way we can reflect that you've actually used a Redux state um, within the application. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. There's a couple things we need to start out with. Um, if you've watched my most recent Electron Byte applications, that's what we're beat as I was corrected upon. Um, there's a couple things we need to install. Um, we need to install the boilerplate for Electron with Beat and React. So that's the first thing we're going to start with. So let's go ahead and type npm create Electron Byte. <clears throat> and this is going to create the Electron Byte app. It's going to let us choose what we want. We're going to go and hit React. Let's go ahead and rename this folder. Um, I'm going to just do electron underscore resume underscore um, application. We'll just do that. And inside of here uh, is all of our boilerplate stuff that we were just given. Um, we're going to visit this here in a second, but first things first, we're going to go ahead and go file. Uh, actually, I have terminal open. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up a GitHub page. So let's go to GitHub. We're going to go to my repositories here. Go ahead and scroll down. We're going to find this REST API framework. And this is the framework we're going to be using for the API um, that we're going to be connecting with. I believe I covered some of this in a different video. Um, so we're just going to be using this framework that I have. It is currently a public framework. I will leave the link to the description below. Um, so you guys can get clone this since it is part of our uh, project. So we're just going to go ahead and do this git clone. And we're going to come back to our terminal. We're going to go ahead and paste this in. And we should have this REST API framework. We can go ahead and rename this. And let's just do... Um, REST back API. So hopefully it'll be able to rename it. I've had some issues with renaming in my Visual Studio code for some reason, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that, but all right, we are back. So for some reason I had to restart my entire Visual Studio code because it wanted to crash just trying to rename a folder. Um, so yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, let's go ahead and CD into the REST API. We'll get all both projects initialized with npm. Um, so let's just do npm i. And there we go. Let's CD into Electron. And let's do npm i there as well. We'll get those project dependencies installed. Okay, so first things first, what we're gonna do is we are going to go scripts. We're gonna change this start from nodemon source server ts. We're going to go ahead and just change it to node um, build slash app.js. And then the first command we're gonna run, we're gonna cd into our REST API folder. And we are going to do npm run build, and hopefully it does build in bundle. Let me verify that it does build. Seems that it did. So let's do npm start. It should start it. Okay. So currently it's unable to connect to my database because I don't think I have a current database supplied um, to it. So let's go ahead and get that set up. So the folder structure of this project is rather simple. Um, the, it has a build folder, whereas all your builds go to. Um, you have a config, which has your default config. Um, you have a token secret, as well as a password salt. These currently are not used in any production applications or anything like that, so it's totally fine for me to show them here. 
um, since this is entirely just a local project and will never be deployed anywhere else. Um, so if you guys are wondering why I'm not blurring them out, that is exactly why. Um, our connection string here is going to be um, our MongoDB instance. Uh, every MongoDB connection string starts with MongoDB colon forward slash forward slash. And then whether or not you're running this on localhost or wherever you might be running it at, um, you have all these as well. Um, this is the base path. So whenever we'll give a quick context of this. So say I were to do like HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Um, my dev server or something dot development dot com or something. Um, this slash API is this right here. So this is going to be slash API, and then your endpoints will follow. So like we'll do auth slash login or auth slash login, and so on and so forth. So then that's basically what this base path is using cores um, i would leave this to true um, most of the time in an api you're going to want the api to use cores um, if in time that you're building this project and you decide that you want to add more things to the api for customizability um, everything that's api related should go here anything that's environment related which is basically tokens and salts and stuff goes there anything server related to do with express um, should probably go in this portion Okay, so now that we've covered the default config, we have a couple of script files here. Um, these are just salt generators, as well as the secret generator. So these will do your password salt and your token secret, and this will generate a new password salt and token secret for you. Um, so you can get the token, which is crypto random bytes, um, then you just convert it to a hex, and then we basically just JSON parse and do all that. Uh, the password salt, this is the one that you can basically change, do any sort of changes you want. So gen salt here takes a couple of parameters. It does a number of rounds. Um, I have this default at 10. Um, this is a rather middle of the road number. So if you want to like up this to like say like 14 or 16, go for it. We're going to leave it as 10 just for the sake of this video and just time complexity. Um, 10 doesn't take too long, whereas anything above like 16 to 24 is going to take quite a long time to generate a salt for your password, but it's going to be far more secure. Webpack is where all of our webpack configs are. Um, we get node environment um, from process.env. We set it to production, um, and then we just do all of this so here um, we can just extract this and we can set no dnv um, in any of our in any of our like start scripts or any of our scripts if you wanted to build like a development script like a development build script you could um, you could very much so do that um, and then you just get rid of this and instead of setting a production you just do that but we are just setting it to production here just for ease ease of access um, and then this is basically what tells Webpack um, what to build and how to build. So if you want to read up more on Webpack, um, there is online documentation for it, that or we can go into a video on that at some point. And we have source here. The source directory is obviously where all of our code is. The server file is where the server gets initialized and, and created and ran. There's a few different little test routes here that we have. We have the test route, which you can just quickly spin up without needing any sort of authentication to make sure that your API is actually listening. Then you have the file router, which basically just uh, lets you upload a file to your server and it'll tell you if the file upload was a success. This is just a simple boilerplate for file uploading um, using Molter and yeah, just Molter. Um, so just that. All right, so we're not gonna focus on this at all right now. We're gonna go back to Electron and we're gonna make a couple changes here. Um, so I'm going to make changes to this. I'm just going to say, uh, my attack resume attack app. Uh, we're just going to set this guy to 1.1.0.0. And if you want to add anything else, like the author, um, you can change this as well. We'll just say Aaron Grinland here. 
and the license MIT is fine, private true, that's fine. Um, all this is fine. Uh, okay, see, so yeah, that looks fine. So let's go ahead and get started with installing some different packages. So let's npmi. We are going to npmi redux. Um, re or uh, React Redux at Redux.js slash toolkit. Um, then we need the Redux developer tools. Uh, we are going to npmi immutability helper. Uh, we then need to <coughs> npmi uh, by v tag ts config tag paths okay and let's see let's see we need the developer tools for um the react app here so npmi electron tech dev tools installer I believe is the name of that package. Looks like it. All right. So that's that. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, now that we've got pretty much all of our package dependencies that we're gonna need installed, we have them there. Um, we can open up Electron and let's go main. I know there's quite a few things we actually need to fix here. Uh, yeah, we can get rid of this. Uh, I can fix okay that doesn't fix absolutely anything for me uh let's change all of these guys tabs uh i'm just going through and formatting here um you guys don't do this if you don't want to okay all that stuff's done all right so let's go ahead and install the uh, developer tools. Let me just do Electron developer tools. I did that in the REST API. That's actually really funny. Nice, nice. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly reinstall those plugins that we just did there, and I'm going to delete them from here because we don't need them. Um, okay, so I went ahead and fixed that problem um, with the imports being in the wrong project for, so that I had them all in REST API instead of this one. Um, so let's go ahead and navigate back down to app that one ready. Let's open this up, uh, create the window. Um, then we're just going to do the uh, redux dev tools dot map. Um, stall extension. Or, um, we'll do extension. install extension extension then Alright, cool. Uh, so now that we have that installed, um, 
we can go ahead and install those extensions there, the Redux Dev Tools. Um, okay. So now that that's complete, we can go ahead and just do npm run dev and verify that everything works and verify that our dev extension does install. You should see something here. Install extension Redux Dev Tools. Let's go ahead and verify that Redux Dev Tools is there. It is currently there. Okay. So now that Redux Dev Tools is installed, um, what's next? Uh, we need to um, verify that our API is connected or can connect to a our database. Um, and we can actually make requests to it. Um, so I'm just going to do a 127.0.0.1 remind and cd into rest and let's do npm run build Um, if you don't have a Mongo database instance installed, I'll leave a link to the installer in the description below. Just go ahead and install that with MongoDB Compass, since we are going to be using MongoDB Compass. Um, in this video. Because we will be using MongoDB Compass in this video, so um, or in this series, I should say, when we want to verify that everything we're sending to the API is actually being installed. Uh, npm run or npm start. Verify it can connect to our database. It is connected to the database. Let's go ahead and open up Postman. If you don't have Postman installed, I will also leave that in the description below. You're going to need that for this series as well. Uh, these are all my other things. So let's go ahead and close these. Uh, save changes for actually, we'll just save, save, close that, add one. Um, and let's just do a simple post. So if we go back into VS Code and we go to our source routes test, um, we do a post test and then we can do a get test as well to verify that everything is working so let's do http colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 6061 since that's what it's listing on api slash post test and hit send and post what test was a success let's do a get test and let's add something into our body here we'll hit raw json we'll just do say username colon YouTube video password colon YouTube video one two three all right so let's go ahead and hit send and cannot post oh you have to change this to get and hit send and then we should have that just returned right back to us the body that we sent okay so now that we've tested this with Postman, we can obviously see that our extension or that our API is working and that we can make requests. If you go back to the API, you should see a various set of requests here as well. Um, since this is using Morgan, which is a logger, um, you can disable Morgan if you'd like to. Uh, but I leave it on just so I can debug my APIs a little bit better and easier. So. So I think that's going to be it for the first episode. Um, like I said, we just went through and set up the project, set up our DevTools extensions in Electron, made sure that it all ran. Um, in the next video, we are probably going to work on the um, Electron side of things, getting preload ready, um, as well as project structure um, with Electron, and getting our projects set up specifically um, with the structure that we want. So uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe for more content, and I will see you all in the next one.